one of the emerging themes and the perennial theme of our conflict is is where is the starting point? Where did Thai society and politics became contentious and uh, caught up, uh, beset with this conflict? So for example, Anitani said that uh, the, the Thai-Cambodian conflict over previous years, 2000, 2003, thereabout. And for Thai politics overall, uh, and this is uh, related to the Thaksin regime, the so-called Thaksin regime, it goes back 12 years. Uh, so we'll keep that in mind. Uh, our next speaker is also a colleague of mine from the Faculty of Political Science. We're all colleagues here. This is a faculty event, uh, Ajahn Phuong Tong. Ajahn Phuong Tong, perhaps you can help us understand a little bit more than uh, probably here, pre pre here. You know, we have to be careful. It's pre here, but it's probably hand to us. Uh, but the international community calls it pre here. And, um, and what else you might have to say, Ajahn Phuong Tong did some work for the after the April-May 2010 event, uh, she was part of a study to look into the, uh, made a report to look into the, um, the event of uh, 2010 in April and May. She also is uh, one of the academics who oppose the amnesty bill for very different reasons, lots and lots of uh, uh, red shirts uh, oppose the bill uh, for different reasons. So, Jan Phong Tong. Thank you, Tatin, and good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start my talk on the issue of the uh, blanket amnesty draft bill, and then uh, we will continue to the temple of privacy issues later. So for me, it's quite certain now that the amnesty bill was dead since the Senate had voted down uh, the bill. And the Thai Party, I believe they would not dare to continue it or pick it up in the, say, in a one-year term after that, I don't know, because politics change every day. But I think, uh, even though the bill is dead now, the government of the Ying Lak Party and the Thai Party still offer apologies to the peoples, people of different groups, which can, in my opinion, uh, can be roughly divided into three major groups. The first group that the government and the Thai Party should apologize to are the people who are against the pardon of Taksin in Chinawa. In my opinion, the judicial process against him after the coup d'etat in 2006 was politically, politically motivated and had to convince the pro Taksin supporters that it was fair. The, but the amnesty bill is not a legitimate way for Taksin to clear himself from the corruption charge not to mention how the bill has passed in a hasty manner at the date of night. The second group the government should uh, apologize to uh, are the wretches who are imprisoned since uh, May 2010 after the arrest and the crackdown. And the apologies, uh, and the apologies should go to their families too. These were the people whom the bill was supposed to help on the basis that their wrongdoings were politically motivated. They were not criminal uh, in nature. But Thaksin and her Thai party messed up the whole thing. The bill was killed, and now they were facing with an uncertain future. Since I believe we quite some time before her Thai there to pick it up again. The second group that uh, the government and her Thai party have to apologize to are the families of the people who were killed during the Berlin crackdown in April, May 2010. This crackdown resulted in 49 deaths and about 2,000 injuries, according to the report that uh, I myself with my colleagues from several institutions did. I will talk about this issue uh, later. Because a blanket uh, amnesty bill was unashamedly let off our political and military leaders involved in the planning of the crackdown. This aspect of the bill showed th that Thaksin and her Thai party were simply irresponsible and selfish. With the highest aim of bringing Thaksin back, they did not hesitate to forget the victim of the state violence. They did not hesitate to save over the dead bodies of the rich supporters. For the radical rich, rich people and intellectual, this is absolutely unacceptable. Since it would allow a culture of impunity to continue in Thai society, 
If we allow those in power to continue to use the excessive force to suppress the people without hesitation again and again. In the past, political and military leaders involved in the violence crackdown, in the mass killing, uh, never been brought to justice, including the, 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 the events of the October 1973, October 1976, where the massacre happened at Tamasa University and also May 1992. For me, Thai, re Thai people need to uproot this culture of impunity, otherwise we will risk facing violence by the state again and again. I mean, fears of position against the bill from various groups also indicate one important aspect of Thai politics. That is, it can no longer be secretly manipulated and settled uh, by a small number of elites. I say this because the inclusion of toxin in the amnesty bill came amid a rumor that uh, there was a super deal between toxin and the establishment, but it still failed miserably despite uh, that super deal. So it means that since the coup d'etat, people of all colors or size have been politically alert. They were brought into conflict and be part of the conflict and be the conflict themselves. Any political deal must be able to persuade the mass that it is legitimate. Mm -hmm. However, though the bill, uh, the, the bill aroused anger from people of all size. But the criticism reflected diverse position and the unresolved political polarization of Thai society. Can you have slide, please? Cause I like it. Eh. I mean, even though all these groups uh, oppose the amnesty bill, it seems that they have something in common. But in my opinion, they are so very different. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, one group, though very small, they were extremely angry with Taksin and Per Thai Party. They include a different minded, racial, racial sympathizer, intellectual activists, like Kun Sombat Bun Ngamanong of the Sunday is Red. Mm. This group makes hard criticism against Taksin and Per Thai Party. Many of them said that they would not they would vote no to put Thai party in the next elections, even though they are racial sympathizer. Mm -hmm. This group actually, uh, the action of this group actually showed their independent mind from Thaksin and Perth Thai. They voice their support, in the party they voice their support to Perth Thai because they support parliamentary politics, not because they love Thaksin. Mm -hmm. They support parliamentary politics as again military dominated aristocrat uh, politics. So they never hesitate to criticize Thaksin uh, of the Thai party if the latter did something wrong. On the contrary, we, did, we didn't see much of the same reaction from the Yellow Church intellectual to what the Democrat party when the latter did something wrong. The picture I show here is uh, the, uh, it comprises the families of those killed in the April uh, 2010, April and May 2010. The banner that they were saying that we don't want a blanket amnesty. The lady in the front uh, is the mother of a volunteer medical, uh, of a medical volunteer. Her daughter of 25 years old was killed at Wat Patu Wanaram which is about 100 or 200 meters from the Rajapasong intersection. So she herself and uh, uh, numbers of a uh, family of, uh, of those who were killed in the crackdown opposed this bill. Okay, this show a uh, picture of the several thousand pressured people gathered at the Rajapasong intersection to protest the blanket amnesty bill as we ask to remind the public that people were killed there. This uh, gathering uh, led by Kun Somsak, Sombat Bun Nga Manung. Okay. Here yeah, I would like to point out some aspects of the anti taxi demonstration. The message that they convey in, in their uh, opposing of the bill. This is a lies. Uh, I translated roughly about uh, Kunafis's speech at a Democrat-led demonstration on Rajanunlan Road, I think on the 6th of November 
he told the crowd that today we stand here, we came to ask on behalf of all the soul of the deceased, so that the government will not save over the dead bodies for their own gain. If Kun Ying La want to cry, come and cry here, because your brother and yourself brought the people to die here. You bring the people to be killed here, and you yourself unashamedly pardon the murderers. Actually, this speech was stunning. It stunned me. I feel like I was living in a Alice in Wonderland when something so incredible could happen. Anyway, if a politician want to whitewash himself, it's understandable. But what worries some is the picture of this. This is a picture of Tulalongkorn student on uh, the joy in uh, the anti blanket nasty bill demonstration led by the university. The banner they carry say, you cheat, you kill, you burn, and you pardon yourself. This banner refer to both Taksin and the imprisoned racial protester is reflect a widespread perception of many educated urbanized Bangkokians about the, the incident, actually about the racial crackdown in 2010. So, do they kill themselves? Are they killed by Taksin? Okay, this is a picture of the sick people who were shot today at the temple of, Ratu, of Wat Pratum, about 200 meters from Lines of Soviet Election on May 19, 2010. According to the South Bangkok Criminal Court, mm. uh, the post mortem inquiry showed that the person died in Wat Pratum was shot were shot by the soldiers. Five were shot by the soldiers situated on the BTS sky train track, while the other one, the other one was shot by soldiers stationed on Ramal first road. The result from Central in Institute of Forensic Science, Thailand, did not find gunshot residue in the hands of the sick victims. Therefore, the inquest concluded that they were not using any weapons. And also, the court also uh, indicated that there were no evidence that of the presence of the men in black at Wapratu Manara. And so far, the post-mortem inquest conducted by the criminal court revealed that 13 people were shot by soldiers, not men in black. Many more cases are in the process. Ah, oh, how can we got even say? Okay, the information, uh, I come back to this one later. This is the book that I, I just showed you that uh, it was done by uh, a groups of academics, including myself, from various institutions, Mehidon, Jolalungon, Thamasat, Uberachitani, and also a group of uh, social activists. We released this report, this one, this report last year, two months before the Thailand Truth uh, and Reconciliation Association uh, released their own. We started this report two months after the crackdown uh, for fear of the government's whitewash of uh, its crimes. The English version uh, will be ready early next year. Mm -hmm. and according to the report, to the report, 94 people were killed, 84 of them were civilians. Among the civilians, two of them were foreign journalists, four of them were medical volunteers. The youngest who was killed was only 12 years old. He was a boy. At least uh, 1,200 uh, people were injured, nine of them became visible. In this crackdown, 67,000 soldiers were employed and almost 600,000 live bullets were issued. About uh, 1,000 uh, to 100,000, 20,000 were spent, the live bullets were spent, and also 2,000 sniper bullets were spent as well in this crackdown. You see, 
We collect uh, the autopsy report and also the picture. We found out that over 30, 30 about 34 percent of those who were killed were shot on the head. 20% of them on their chest. The rest were under the belly. The way of shooting showed that it's not self-defense. It should kill. They burn themselves, they, they burn the, the central world themselves. This image of central world dominated the perception of uh, the public. Even though now the Bangkok Criminal Court acquitted of for Rachel Processor charged with arson of the Central World. Uh, the guy, the picture of the guy here uh, is a retired police lieutenant colonel, Chumphon Bunprayun. Uh, he was an advisor to the fire prevention of the Central Group. He testified in the court that around 3 p.m. of the May 19, 2010, Mm -hmm. uh, he and his uh, his staff saw the C saw from the CCTV that there were seven to eight men dressed like soldiers and carrying weapons. They came in from the central wall side. Our security men tried to block their entrance, but they were thrown grenade upon. Even policemen who came in to help had to retreat. He insisted that the Richard were incapable of burning down the central wall, which had the best fire prevention system in Asia. He also said that he knew all the Richard guys, but on that day, none of them showed up at the central wall. Mm -hmm. So this, this is just part of the, uh, the information uh, we collected uh, in our report. But this information, this basic information, showing the excessive use of force by the government. This is information seen into the mind of the anti-taxin people, I dare say no. Partly because they hate taxin and religion so much that they did not care to know. And partly because most mainstream media, which are also, which also hate taxin, did not report this information. We launched our report uh, four times, one in Bangkok, one in Chiang Mai, and one at, uh, in Dubai, Rajatani. <laughs> But more mainstream media will not report this. And this is part of an ongoing resolved problem in Thai society. People of different size and color are very selective in consuming news and information. You can see it very really clearly on the social media, on the Facebook, the way they, they discard about the issue. So when public opinion based on false or selective information and biases, it's difficult to, eat, to solve even a small part of the conflict. It's almost impossible to have a public consensus on any particular uh, political issues now. So I move on to the, the uh, baby here, temple issues. Uh, I would like to, uh, to correct something. Uh, actually, the, the year there is something that Jan uh, says about uh, the timeline of the previous years, uh, issues. Uh, the agreement, I mean, the Cambodia first submitted uh, the file to nominate the temple on the World Heritage List uh, in 2007, but at the time it was rejected. It was Actually, it was opposed by uh, Thailand because it including the uh, disputed area of 4.6 square kilometers. You will see that uh, the, the dark area, that the 4.6 square kilometers. So uh, the World Heritage Committee uh, listened to the Thai opposition and told uh, both countries to go back and talk to each other. So at the end, Cambodia decided and uh, agreed to uh, exclude the 4.6 square kilometer from its nomination file. So the temple uh, gained the heritage, heritage status in 2008. And actually the agreement that both countries uh, agreed that they will try to nominate the temple as World Heritage started before 2007. Okay. The idea started from Taksin Chinawat, but it became uh, 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 materialized in at the, the later part of Taksin government and then 
uh, the government of General Suryu Tulanon, which came after the coup d'etat, also supported the idea. You see? And I would say that actually, uh, so when Cambodia excluded that disputed area from its nomination file, the Thai government mm, supported uh, the nomination in the form of a joint communique. And in that joint communique, it stated clearly that uh, at the time of the nomination form, at the time of the, this nomination, Cambodia will not uh, include the disputed area in its development plan. And both sides, both countries will have a committee to work out how to jointly develop the area. But that joint communique, that idea, which I think is an idea for any country to uh, to deal with the territorial dispute has been killed because uh, the constitution court said that the joint communique violated uh, the constitution, the article uh, 190. So uh, the effort to uh, manage the territorial dispute with a peaceful means, with a cultural and economic means, just been killed. Uh, and also, one thing we like to say that, of course, the clash between uh, uh, the troops of Thailand and Cambodia happened uh, during Khun Samak, and I Khun Samak Som Chai, Samak Som Chai, Khun Samak period. But because of the PAD, send their people trying to encroach on the, the temple's uh, uh, ground. But after Kunapisis became uh, the Prime Minister, the crash intensified. I think it's quite clear that Kunapisis played along with the PAD position on the, uh, on the temple issues. And when he played along with the, the PAD position, it became very confusing because of false information was spread that such as Thailand still have the right to reclaim the temple, even though it's quite clear that uh, we don't have that right after the 10 years after the verdict. But this has been repeated again and again so many times in the media. Also, uh, the voice of formation that Cambodia only uh, oh the pie, a pie of the stones, why the crowd where the temple situated belong to Thailand. So that's why one of uh, the generals said that we just bomb the temple and then nothing left and then we can take uh, take the territory to for our own. I mean, the strategy that the government at the time used was trying to delist the temple from the heritage list. For me this is wrong. The government should separate uh, the sovereignty over the temple to tell the people we don't have the right to reclaim sovereignty over the te temple and the ter ter territory where it's situated. Separate it from the disputed area. If Cambodia want to develop the temple, want to, nom want to nominate it as a heritage site, let them do it. We don't have that right to interfere anymore. But for the disputed area of 4.6 square kilometers, Thailand still keep the sovereignty claim. And let's talk about the issue. Don't mix them up together. But when they mix these two issues up together, it's impossible to negotiate. Because every year when the Voluntary Committee took place, there will be a news that we are trying to oppose it. See? And so when the relationship between Phnom Penh and Bangkok intensified, the crash took place on the border area. And the worst one happened in April and uh, in June, April uh, 2011. And that's why Cambodia uh, took the case back to the ICJ for interpretation again. So that's why we came to this uh, uh, point of uh, the event. Now, uh, about the, I still have time, right? Okay, right? Few minutes only? Two minutes only. Okay, uh, I think I don't need more than that. Mm. Okay, in contention with the, the amnesty bill, it is uh, fortunate that the World Court ruling over the temple dispute this time did not result in the loss of the whole disputed area of 4.6 square kilometers, as people had been worried before. So the anti government group were unable to exploit the ruling for the hidden agenda. 
this time the court ruled that the vicinity of the temple covered a whole promontory of Priyavi here. Uh, the promontory is the, you see the, the top of the mountain which is uh, flat land. So the promontory is under Cambodian sovereignty, therefore Thailand has an obligation to withdraw its rule from the area. In fact, one should not say that Thailand lost another piece of territory to Cambodia this time, because it was not a new verdict, but it was an interpretation of the judgment made in 1962. We already lost it since 1962. It is a continued obligation that Thailand had to follow. Even though many people still perceive the railing as a loss of territory, the area was rather small. The whole promontory has an area of around half a square kilometers only. You see, uh, the whole promontory. We also need to understand that uh, right after Thailand lost the case in 1962, the Thai cabinet drew up two maps determining a dynasty of the temple to be given to Cambodia. They themselves were not sure how large a dynasty should be. So the first map covered the whole promontory. Uh, the other maps it's a quadrangle of uh, 0.3 square kilometers. The Thai community chose a smaller one and elected a wide fence around it. The fence simply cut the promontory into half. See, the darker area is, uh, is the area that under, uh, within the, the wild fence. Uh, Besides, the Thai legal team led by uh, Ambassador Virachai Parasai explained to the public that Thailand did not lose any Cambodia. Did not lose and Cambodia did not really win the case because Cambodia did not receive what it claimed. There was a whole disputed area. The court limited its ruling to the promontory of Priyavi here. Besides, it did not address the issue of sovereignty over the Phnom Trap. Uh, Phnom Trap or in Thai we call Phumakhe. Uh, I don't have it. Oh, I did. I forget to copy. But on top, it's just next to uh, the promontory. It's a different hill from the promontory of Rivi here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Thai legal team insisted that Thailand retain its right to lay claim on the Phnom Trap and other areas outside the Brevi here promontory. However, Cambodia also lay claims to this area too. Therefore, there remains a disputed area on the Dongrek Mountain, which is now a little smaller than 4.6 square kilometer. So the two countries need to continue talking on this issue. But on the other hand, the government had to show their utmost determination to protest national interests and did not give in to Cambodia pressure too easily. This is why Prime Minister Ying Lak once told a member of parliament that she had never committed publicly to unconditionally complying with the court ruling. And she would act up on the issue, uh, relying on approval by parliament. But in my opinion, Thailand, at least soon or later, had to withdraw its rule from the promontory. But the Cambodian government should understand the situation in Thailand and be patient on this issue. Also, the government Thailand and Cambodia now in a good terms and they show a uh, commitment to maintain a good relationship. So I think people, the nationalists, should leave them to do their job and stop politicizing this issue. So we say that the court ruling gave Thai people a mixed feeling, like um, we are fed up with the prolonged and complicated conflict. We lost, but the loss was not so much. So it may not be to go for a war with Cambodia. But on the other hand, the government must try to protect Thailand territory as much as possible. Do not pull out Thai troops so soon, etc. Last but not the least, this time many major media outlets appear to be more balanced and listen to cautious voices from academics more than what happened five years ago when the temple dispute uh, first occurred. Because of all this mixed result, the public feeling did not go along way with the anti taxi intent from that the Thai government must not give up a single inch of territory to Cambodia and must comply to the court order. So in conclusion, a fool that they were looking forward to turn out to be too little for them to trigger nationalist fight this time. While the agenda to topple the government in Lang to be weakened down once the Senate threw out the amnesty bill and they put Thai uh, withdraw the, the, the bill from the parliament. However, another political crisis is waiting for you this afternoon. We have to 
listen to uh, the court, uh, the, cons the constitution court decision. So Thailand is very good at entertaining our guests. We have so exciting thing for you. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Phong Tong. As you can see, we have different um, reference points in in Thai politics, different emphases, different ways of seeing things, different realities, and somehow we have to find ways to make them compatible uh, and consistent and uh, synchronize sufficiently so that we can somehow reconcile and move on. We, haven't, we have not reached that point yet. I hope we, we will. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do here now. Uh, we have some time, a little bit over half hour. I, I know that uh, there will be lots of questions and uh, comments. I, I, I also know that the, the panelists, the speakers, also will have some views by now to additional things to say. Um, so please limit your questions and comments. Uh, very, you know, very brief, uh, be concise. No long speeches, uh, no statements. Um, first, I think the new correspondent from Financial Times. Um, Professor Wang Tong's speech was a reminder that there's been a lot of killing in this country um, and precious little uh, accountability so far. Uh, and of course, governments from both sides of the political spectrum and the security forces have been implicated in this. I was struck that we didn't hear a great deal about justice, accountability, or indeed a vision for Thailand uh, from either of the party representatives. So I'd like to ask the party representatives what message they would give to Thais and international friends of Thailand who might feel that uh, what is happening at the moment is a, uh, a rather self-interested and self-absorbed power struggle between the two parties that is, is holding back the development of the country and is just going to continue until the next explosion, um, which on past evidence uh, could be very unpleasant indeed. So the question is, well, what do the party representatives have to say to people who are worried about the absence from both parties of um, proper uh, measures towards justice and accountability? What's the vision from Thailand for Thailand of the parties beyond this permanent power struggle? And what do they say to worries in Thailand and internationally that we're just essentially waiting for the next explosion, which uh, could be bad? I just have two questions. One for Dr. Jatupan. Uh, she said uh, in her speech that uh, uh, the, the Pua Thai uh, party is not intended to, to put on the table the, the amnesty bill again. Is th does this mean that the, the current version of the amnesty bill or they will put on the table the former amnesty bill? And if that is uh, the case, my second question goes to Dr. Mr. Korn. What is the position of the Democratic Party if uh, there is the former amnesty bill put on the table? Thank you. Um, so, for the Thai Party uh, couldn't, couldn't get uh, the amnesty bill. So, and it has a bad impact on the society. I think that someone should take the responsibility of this failure. So, who do you think uh, take the responsibility in your party or in the government uh, for this uh, for such a situation. Is the amnesty bill dead forever? Uh, uh, the Vorachai version could be reintroduced or, or where do we stand on that? And, and also about the, the responsibility with this uh, uh, really legislative fiasco, uh, what, what kind of responsibility, responsibility should we be seeing? Uh, thank you, Ajahn Panitan. I have heard from friend Ajahn Chitina. <laughs> you see um, how difficult um, these situations we we have Ajahn Panitan start to support, <laughs> make a compliment on, on our government and our uh, beloved <laughs> friend Ajahn Phong Tong start to complain a lot. So <laughs> our is start to be very confused now. Sorry, Ajahn Chidinan. Ajahn Chidinan, I, I have heard from a friend from uh, Financial Times about the accountabilities. And uh, the second question is about uh, uh, if the Thai party will uh, 
put the amnesty bill again, propose the amnesty bill again, and uh, from friend from Japan, uh, the, the the responsibilities who will take responsibilities for the failure of the amnesty bill. Um, this is very challenging questions uh, for three for these three questions. The accountability is uh, is also our worry. Uh, we we really worry about the freedom of um, people and uh, and equalities and also the accountabilities of, of Thailand. So this is the most um, challenging things. What what is will be the priorities? Put priorities uh, to to the time limit, uh, the freedom or accountabilities. So. How could we bring both uh, forward parallelly? This is the the most difficult questions, and uh, now that's why earlier I I proposed that we should have dialogue. To hear people uh, deeply. Uh, what they want, and as representatives uh, of the people, we have to represent the whole country. So we would like to have uh, as much as voice and opinions and um, their uh, decisions on both issues, on the, both freedom and accountabilities. So. Uh, Article 4 in our constitutions, equality of people to be considered and uh, who will be included to the forgiveness of the 10 years or longer than that uh, conflict in political uh, situation which bring every party even though I used to teach at the university has to come across to the politics sphere and um, change my life and uh, everyone change their life also to move and cross this um, conflict to move forward in positive way and also who will be responsible to this failure so uh, you asked this uh, very very fundamental question which is the, um, we the same time as uh, accountability is who will be responsible and when we call accountability and responsibilities who will be called first on on these difficult issues so as a Tan Pong Tong uh, my good friends she witnessed that um, many some 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 of academics uh, come out from comfort zones, uh, from university, and stand alongside with people. And uh, I, th I don't think that will be many people walking on the street on the difficult day. Uh, and we still uh, very have high intention to apologize for that. If we could not uh, relieve the suffer of people and uh, relieved the worry of people. And uh, if people still have worry and uh, suffer, we will suffer also. And we will responsible for that feeling and that worry also as representatives. So uh, if you ask my personal opinion, is the opinions of people. Therefore, this is the quite difficult uh, answers, but uh, I try to answer at it, it best. And uh, what we could do next, and what it will be the best resolutions uh, of of the situation in Thailand. Please tell tell us. So we will happy to to uh, hear deeply and to do the job for people as much as possible. Thank you. And uh, the question from Minister Isawa about the responsibility for the the, the failure of the of the bill, 
Um, any, any, any plans uh, of the government? Uh, any reaction from the government? Um, the plan of the government is to, is to hear the verdict. The decisions are at 11 o'clock. And now uh, I will be here, and, <laughs> and and it will be in the next six minutes. <laughs> so I think the the decision will be step by step, Hajan. Thank you, thank you. Kun Kwan, uh, there was a question from the Financial Times uh, <coughs> for representatives of political parties to, yeah, and then the last one perhaps uh, on uh, the, the, the Warachai one. If the Warachai version, the original amnesty version, if that were to be reintroduced, uh, would the Democrat Party countenance that? Would, that, would you be receptive to that? Okay. Um, first of all, the answer to Michael, Financial Times. From the Democrat Party's perspective, I think the answer is pretty clear. We, uh, our standpoint and our leader's standpoint, that the judicial process should be allowed to run its course. Uh, I think it's clear uh, in terms of what our view is with regards to um, the need to uh, adhere to um, the judicial process. Um, in fact, immediately subsequent to the uh, May events, um, when we were still in government, um, the uh, opposite cabinet approved the creation of the Truth and Reconciliation um, body run by, uh, chaired by Dr. Kenneth Nanakorn, tasked specifically with, uh, well, finding truth and then making suggestions based upon uh, that truth on a path towards reconciliation. Interestingly, um, when the uh, appointment of Dr. Kenneth was made, um, it ruffled quite a few feathers within the Democrat Party um, because uh, Dr. Kenneth um, was, of course, a founding member of Thai Rak Thai Party, which was Dr. Thaksin's original political party. Um, but I visit uh, was insistence of the need uh, for uh, unbiased uh, and people at least not seem to be pro-democrat uh, to be in charge of this process in order for the process to have proper legitimacy. So there was a full intent in, in uh, search for the truth. Um, another interesting point was that during the political campaign um, in the subsequent general elections, uh, the Pua Thai Party, um, specifically Kun Ying Lam, um, made very clear statement that they would fully back the working and the findings of uh, this um, truth and reconciliation body. Um, uh, this obviously didn't turn out to be the case, not least because Dr. Kenneth has subsequently come out against uh, the recent amnesty um, process um, and basically has called for Pua Thai many times uh, to um, observe and, and uh, respect the findings and recommendations of the TRC, which Pua Thai has completely ignored. Um, so from our perspective, the fact that Abhisit and Sutep both clearly stated in Parliament that um, in spite of the different uh, opinions with regards to uh, responsibility that should be taken for events in May, um, that they are willing to uh, speak their case in the court of law and are willing to respect any ruling or decision uh, in the courts of law um, based upon the evidence that both sides are able to show. Um, which uh, relates relating to the, the various death that Dr. Bong Tong was talking about, I think says everything that needs to be said about our view um, of the need to uh, uh, adhere to the judicial process and to to fully respect it. Okay, is that clear? Uh, yes, but what about the the wider point uh, about? What do you say to people who are concerned that this struggle is just leading Thailand from crisis to crisis and essentially the system is paralyzed while people wait for the next explosion? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, the, the challenging question for us um, is what does that imply we should or shouldn't do um, as a political party? 
uh, in order to avoid conflict, do we should we just let the ruling party, uh, you know, do everything that it wants to do, um, even though we disagree with it and, and feel that um, many of these actions will will damage the country? Um, should we have just kept quiet regard, related to the uh, proposed amnesty bill? Should be should we be keeping quiet about? Um, the corruption scams uh, in the rice pledging pro uh, uh, program. What do you expect us to do um, in, in, in the face of what we see to be wrongs um, being, being done by, by the ruling government? Um, it's, it's our job uh, to oppose um, and to highlight any, any wrongs that we see. Um, if that is interpreted as conflict, then it's not the people who are, who, who are pointing out these wrongs that should be blamed, frankly. Uh, it should be people who are instigating these wrongs uh, that should be corrected. Um, I know other people want to speak, but just very quickly to follow up on that. I mean, the Democrat position on the amnesty bill and the protests has been ambiguous, to say the least. And there are certainly some critics who would say the party has had its cake and eaten it. On the one hand, saying, well, we're all about parliament and the rule of law and all the things you're saying. And on the other hand, there are people who are uh, running uh, protests and so forth, and they might have officially resigned and all the rest of it. But. Um, there are certainly some people who would argue that this is a sign that the, the Democrat strategy is uh, not transparent um, and that in fact it's a twin track strategy doing the kinds of things you described while also taking oh, okay, to the okay. Th okay. Th thank you, thank you, Hyun. Um, that's, that's, that's being interpreted as a speech. Th th um, there's a question here as well about uh, whether the Warachai bill okay. would be acceptable. It's, it's actually the same, uh, uh, same question. Um, first of all, I don't think our position on the amnesty bill has been ambiguous at all. We opposed it, clear and simple, right from the start. I don't, I don't know what you see, see as being ambiguous about that. I mean, um, on the wider street protests. Yeah, yeah, okay, but that's not quite, quite what you said uh, at the beginning. Um, so I'd say that our position on the amnesty bill is unambiguous. We, we opposed it. Um, the. Uh, uh, subsequent street protests against the amnesty bill is within our democratic rights. It was peaceful. Um, we very uh, consciously avoided even breaching um, the uh, Internal Securities Act uh, demarcation of, of areas uh, that the government deemed should be free of protests. We never breached that. Um, frankly, there was a lot of pressure for us to do so because many people felt that <coughs> the, um, uh, the use of the in Internal Security Act was itself uh, unjustified and, and potentially non-legitimate. But in any case, we respected that. Um, so I don't see that anything that we've done um, has been undemocratic uh, or, or, or even uh, or, or, or illegal. Um, I agree with you, though, that uh, subsequent to the uh, voting down in the Senate of the amnesty bill, um, the protest has become more opaque um, in its mission, and <clears throat> uh, although it, it remained consistently peaceful, um, which, I, which I think is, is a positive note. Um, and the reason why it's opaque uh, <clears throat> is because the protest leaders have not clearly stated exactly what it is that they are hoping to achieve. Now, that's not inconsistent with a lot of protests. Um, you know, the, um, I, I, f I forget the name of the Wall Street protests that we saw in, in the United States, but, but nobody ever said that that wasn't uh, democratic, um, but it certainly wasn't clear in terms of what it was that the protesters were calling for. So it's not unusual for protests, is all I'm saying, um, that uh, goals and objectives are not precise. Um, and I need to stress the fact that, uh, that the point that you made, which is that protest leaders resign uh, from um, their status as Democrat MPs. So they're not representing the Democrats. What more can they do um, in, in order to, uh, to stress that point? Now, back to the um, Warachai draft. 
let me just answer it this way because there were many flaws within the Warishai draft other than <coughs> the subsequent amendments. <coughs> so I don't want to, um, <coughs> excuse me, I don't want to uh, say that the Warishai draft without the amendment would have been okay. It wasn't. But the basic principle of um, providing amnesty to individuals who uh, committed, who, who, who in breach of the law, in particularly the emergency decree, uh, um, it's, it's, not a, it's not an issue um, for the Democrat Party. We have no problem with providing amnesty uh, in, in these cases. What we begin to have a problem with, uh, individual conscious um, uh, breach of the criminal, criminal law, um, which uh, would have included arson, would have included um, whoever it was that was re responsible for the 90 odd or so deaths um, from the protests. Um, with regards to uh, these crimes, uh, we feel that in order for proper reconciliation to be had, uh, it's important to follow the path that Dr. Kenneth's Truth and Recon Re uh, Reconciliation team uh, has set out, which is first we must establish truth and, and we must um, establish that uh, uh, justice. And, and subsequently, uh, amnesty, forgiveness, and so on and so forth uh, could more naturally um, be, be derived. So that's, that's how uh, I would answer that particular question. And, and by the way, if I may, um, Professor Pung Tong in her slides um, put up a, a quote from uh, Kunapiset. Um, and I think if I read you correctly, you, you showed your disgust at that particular quote. Um, if we were able to see that quote again, I don't see that there was anything he said that was inconsistent with, in fact, what Dr. Pung Tong is asking for, um, which is that the judicial process should be allowed to run its course. The only difference is that Dr. Pung Tong thinks he, obviously, is the murderer, um, and obviously, feels that he's not. Um, but Abhisit is the one who's saying, well, let's have the only proper place of deciding this disagreement is in the court of law. I mean, and he was, he, he was being upfront about saying that he's willing to uh, respect whatever the verdict of, of the court should be on that particular case. I, I don't see what more you can ask from a guy. And I don't see why the Pung Tong should be disgusted that he said that. Con, I think you uh, have every reason to feel uh, proud that uh, a protest movement led by your party succeeded in putting the brakes on the amnesty bill. Uh, but what uh, readers of the Bangkok Post and the nation are probably not aware, last week, for instance, there was a crowd of 50,000 red shirts who gathered at the bus station outside Konken. Similar tens of thousands have been gathering in pockets around the northeast and the north. Uh, so if you say the politics of the street does matter to shape the agenda as you've already achieved. Uh, aren't you sort of leaving room open for this kind of street attentions to run its course and not know where it's going to head? That's my question to you. And to Kun uh, in 2012 May, when the Red Shirts met for the anniversary on May 19th, Kun Thaksin delivered his famous speech where he used the metaphor of him as a ship coming to show and asking the Red Shirts to forget all their pain and suffering. And he really got a cheer. In fact, people were crying at Rajprasong when he delivered the speech. Soon after that, Thaksin had to apologize. Kun Ok, his son, had to also apologize to Dr. Th uh, Ajahn Tida of UDD. And now, a year and a half later, he has done, it, he has done an even bigger blunder. So my question is, is he out of touch? with the Thai society, uh, though, since he leads your party from Dubai. Uh, and is there anybody from the party who can convey the message that his strategy doesn't seem to be working? Um, the problem was that uh, in spite of calls for wanting to have dialogues and deep talks and so on and so forth, um, we weren't allowed any of that in Parliament. Um, the debate on the amnesty law uh, 
uh, was so uh, shortened um, and members of parliament were not given their constitutional rights to, uh, to have their say. And I think that added to the frustration, um, the fact as we speak that the, uh, the House Speaker has refused to uh, accept the opposition uh, motion for no confidence, which is unheard of. Uh, again, is testimony to the fact that Parliament is not being allowed to serve its proper function, um, and I think that is a major, uh, major problem. I'm not saying that without, you know, had we been able to have our say, the people may not have made their moves in the way that they did publicly. Um, but it definitely has added to the tension, and I would say it's added to the legitimacy uh, of street protests because how else can the people um, voice their concerns if their representatives are, are muzzled? <laughs> Thank you, Ma Wan. This is um, also the, 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 the difficult question, but it's a um, repeating the questions that uh, I um, answered these questions on uh, during uh, observing the lectures as academic um, uh, faculties and uh, Dr. Tassin is um, individuals and uh, also he wants of the red church movement for pro-democracy somehow the uh, individuals leads might have the opinions quite um, louder than others but sometimes um, people have uh, louder opinions also uh, so it's it, it's a phenomenon if we we have uh, witness, wit witnessed this um, five six year repeating again and again it seems that um, he doesn't lead the the role anymore for somehow and people lead the road for somehow as well. So if uh, if you see uh, Dr. Taksin apologized, then uh, I think it will be also me who, who would like to apologize to the situation as well, because we already involved to the situation, every one of us involved to the situation, and uh, we try our best I, in my personal uh, uh, eyes, seeing that uh, everyone try their best to to do uh, the uh, the things to be resolved and bring the best knowledge from individuals to to be considered. Uh, even though in Per Thai Party and Red Church and Red Church supporter, they have very wide varieties uh, from Taksin supporters. And uh, some, I mean, in the middle, uh, would like to see the truth, or or people who would like to to see uh, people lead the nation. So it's it's very every broadened to to the society right now who who are red, who who really pro democracy. Um, so many many supporters and various opinions. So among ourselves, as uh, Dr. Paditan said, we attack ourselves all the time because um, our friends always fight to each other to bring best resolutions to have, um, I mean, to resolve the suffering, which been brought, in, brought to, 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 to our home for several years. So, uh, I also feel the suffer of people and and still feel suffered I mean for for them and very sorry for for what happened and if it would be be um, positive uh, hope in the future or in next few days I I would like to I mean wish for uh, uh, the situation would bring and transform the suffer into the pro positive, creatively uh, resolutions for, for our home and our nations. Army and politics, we are, we're trying to stay 
we are trying to stay away from politics, but we are always drawn in, like today, we are trying to listen, me and my colleagues here are here to listen. But we are drawn in by the comments made by Dr. Pung Tong, especially the presentation on um, the murder of innocent victims uh, three years ago, three and a half years ago. Um, this is a very sensitive subject, and I think we need to have a, an army representative to sit on the panel to actually um, give you the correct information or our version of the information. Because uh, me and my colleague, we were one, one of the people who were there three and a half years ago. And the standoff was um, almost two months, and the final day there was, um, of course, there was a lot of shooting. But what um, the presentation did not present was that the army was also sh shot at. We didn't go in there with guns rolling. We were told to uh, stick to our rules of engagement. If we are shot at, we would shoot back by people with um, weapons. So that was the information that was missing from the presentation. And I'm concerned that with such distinguished audience, and this information should be, uh, should bear in mind that uh, the other side of the information. I think um, such important um, panels, um, forums, um, that the Girard Khan University holds, always on politics, academics, but I think we should include representative of the military to be here as well, because somehow the marriage of military and politics, we try to divorce you, but no, we cannot get a divorce. So we need a representation. Thank you. Um, I'm with APCO Worldwide Consultancy. It's good to be back. I was struck by Azan Banitan comment on the fact that parliament is in crisis. Um, so I would like to ask about the prospect of Thai politics. Do you think it's about time to move forward and talk about another round of deep political reforms or rather political party reforms? Um, and do you think there's um, capital, inter intellectual capital or resources to talk about it if we actually pass through the current crisis we have? And related to that, Ajahn Pong Tong, um, do you think the Red Church would ev eventually have their own party to actually represent um, their, um, their desire? Uh, it seems like uh, the fraud um, saying that uh, we will see um, how this solution soon in the future. But um, let me ask a uh, frank question that, okay, if we, uh, the how is this? Concise one, please. Yeah, if the, the how is this solution now? So uh, it's very clear that Pure Thai will return again. Uh, so I don't think it's a good choice and it's a good um, you know, solution for the Thai politics. So uh, this question will um, list to all of you, like Khun Gon, uh, even your party will not win uh, for the election. So uh, why, why, why the demonstration at uh, Raj Damdan still want, want to see the house this solution? And for Ajahn Panitan, I seem like it's better if the, uh, the government will decide to, to uh, for house this solution. So why you think li like that? And for, <laughs> for Ajahn Sarufan, yeah, is there any possibility for house this solution? And essentially, the two questions are related. You know, uh, is there a room for a red shirt party or another kind of party uh, in the system? What are the prospects going forward? What do we do now if we get past this, uh, this hum, this crisis that we have uh, ongoing? Uh, if the house is actually dissolved, does that solve anything? If we end up with Pure Thai Party in as a majority again. Uh, and the assumption from the, the, the lady is that Putai is likely to win. Uh, he won by a large uh, margin last time. Uh, John Bernstein said uh, there's a shift uh, in the opinion surveys, perhaps. So where do we go from here, uh, assuming that we can get past this current round of uh, brinkmanship? Uh, John Pung Tong first, maybe? I'm happy to have a public forum debating with the representative of the army. Actually, uh, once uh, we launched our report, uh, one of the advisors to the Thailand TRC through the reconciliation commission headed by uh, Ajahn Khanid Nanakorn, uh, that I mean, the advisor, she is a foreign uh, expert on uh, peace and reconciliation, approached us whether we want to have a public forum. I said yes. Anywhere, anytime. 
okay. Uh, but I, I would like to point here, you see, I didn't deny entirely that there was no violence used by maybe, we don't know who they are, maybe the men in black or maybe some rituals. But the problem here is the, the number of the live bullets and sniper bullets, the employment of such a massive force, it showed the excessive use of force by state. No country in the world use such a massive force and weapons to handle uh, demonstrations. And it's quite clear that those who were killed, they were civilians, they carry no weapons. In, in the case of the Wat Patum Manaram, it's quite clear that there were no uh, the residue of uh, gunpowder on, on the, those who were killed at all. For me, if, if any demonstration uh, use violence, it's the duty of uh, the state's uh, agency to handle with them. But the state cannot use force against people who are unarmed, who were unarmed. For me, I mean, if uh, in the future any government can bring in uh, the men in black, I'd be happy that we be, they will be punished. But for the state who kill uh, unarmed people, I think that's unacceptable. Okay. And also uh, the questions that Pavit asked, good to see you again, Pavit. No, I think it's, it's quite difficult. I'm not sure. I don't see any future that a lecturer will be able to have their own party. But I hope that those independent-minded uh, lecturers, not just in Bangkok, even in a uh, big city in Chiang Mai, Borachatani, I, mean, I think there are quite a... Uh, a big number of them, not a majority of course, who are more and more critical of the Thai party and they want the party to be, respons to be more responsible to, to the voters. For example, they, are, uh, they want to have a, a primary vote. You see, this primary vote will somehow uh, give the power to, to the people in the area. I mean, the, the representative of the party will have to listen more to the local people that listen to uh, the Kun Thaksin or, or the Pertai in Bangkok. See? So he, this, this, the, there will be some more progress on, on this area. And one la uh, the last question, I would like to say that about the amnesty, whether there is possible to for, the, for it to emerge again. Actually, I'm, I'm more concerned about the Rachel, who were in prison since 2010. I don't know, I think it's a responsibility of the Thai party that they have to make this possible. Maybe the government have to formulate a decree and submit it to parliament and pardon only uh, people who involved in the uh, protest in 2010 only. But they have to have a courage to this, and it, it's not easy, it's difficult because people already have doubt. They don't have trust in government anymore, but they have to try to do it. And because also the opposition will be, uh, I think the Democratic Party will be opposite again, even though it includes only people, not the leaders, not Ku Thang Sin. But I think the Democratic Party, what we said is several times that. Uh, he opposed the amnesty. No, he agreed to the amnesty for people who violated the emergency decree uh, in 2010. But people who violated emergency decree, they were already released from the prisons because the emergency decree, the maximum punishment is only two years, but now three and a half years only. So these agreements doesn't mean much anything. We need amnesty for those who were charged with other uh, matters. Thank you. First of all, let me try to also respond to uh, the Colonel's uh, concern and Ajahn Pong Tong's point, I think which has quite valid in many respects. Um, yeah. In fact, I almost failed uh, today by bringing up the three plus one factors. Uh, I think your audience interested in the plus one factor much more. Yeah. Political parties, Kun Thaksin, Kun Apisit. But I'm glad that we brought you back to the first three factors. That is you know, good governance, transparency, rule of law, corruption, check and balance. And this has a lot to do 
with what went on in the last few years during military operation. Uh, from the beginning, I, I, I remember very well uh, realizing that uh, we have a not so good history of of the military intervention, uh, and 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 we also uh, push for the military reform uh, many times uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, the military will not be uh, in in politics in 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 the old ways. Uh, so from the beginning of the CRES operation. We, 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 we made sure that uh, everything is transparent. Uh, this is why Kunabisit and Kunsutep are very adamant to go to court. This is why they totally rejected, because they too wanted to see if their orders followed uh, by the military. Uh, the military reassures that they will follow uh, the, the uh, issues, the orders, uh, in a democratic way, in a transparent way. And by the way, as you know very well, in the CRES center, uh, almost half of them are sympathizers to the wretched. I re remember, remember very well uh, the meeting that we had, uh, televised, you know, from the CCTV to the wretched demonstrations. You know, uh, that how transparent uh, it was uh, during those days. Uh, but of course, there are rooms for doubts. There, there are room for uh, for uh, miscalculations. Uh, uh, if if they are, uh, it has to be proven in court. And so far, the court began to have preliminary hearings on on on, on these issues, um, on the cause of deaths uh, by some of the uh, cases that, that you hear from a Chan uh, from a Chan Phuong Thong's point of view. But you don't hear very much on other cases. For example, uh, the police that uh, use the M79 to shut down the Emerald Buddha Temple. You don't hear very many uh, uh, cases of the people who are transporting weapons, including hundreds and hundreds of uh, M79s to the area that has been arrested, sent to, uh, sent to prisons. You, you don't hear uh, many who are on the run uh, associates with, uh, uh, sadly, the, 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 you know, the deceased uh, uh, General uh, Sedang, who admitted that uh, they are participating uh, in the events dressing in a black shirt. Some of them are even photographed, televised by CNN on the BTS. Uh, you don't hear very many of these uh, uh, cases. Uh, in fact, it's hard to believe that uh, some of these soldiers, your people, are killing or did kill uh, Rom Gao and some of the police uh, on those days. Uh, these cases have to be proven in court. The amnesty bill will not uh, prove any of these. This is why a lot of people, like or not like uh, these personalities, really wanted a proof. And it is fair to raise questions like Dan Phuong Thong said. How, how come so many bullets has been, has been dispersed and used? How many bullets are actually used? Uh, are these real bullets or are these bad bullets? Are these good bullets? Who's using it? Who's shooting whom? You know, all of these is, is puzzling to the people, including some of the members of the Truth and Reconciliation Council who admitted to us, uh, uh, not in public, that uh, he, he or, or she also had doubts uh, that some of the... Um, some of the killings are not, uh, you know, are not so, uh, are not so straightforward like we hear in the public. So all of this has to be proved in court, and I think this is why a lot of people like or not like these personalities uh, come out on the street. Uh, I think that at least they deserve the truth. I think we need to go on pressing, and and this is of course including operations. You know that this amnesty covered, you know, also uh, uh, problematically in Pak by and Kuse two years uh, before uh, uh, before um, the uh, coup took place. Uh, all of this has to be uh, has to be answered. I think that the young uh, colonels uh, will, will not have problem uh, with these uh, going to court. I think they're ready. Uh, in the beginning, they were not that ready. This is why these cases are just uh, they. Were were defended uh, by the military uh, lawyer who's not really uh, uh, equipped with their uh, expertise. But now I think they're more ready to fight, uh, although some of, uh, some of the protection has been granted to them already by the decree. But I think it's very important to go and, and make sure that this trans transparency uh, is addressed on this issue. I think uh, this is why the amnesty bill uh, will may, may return in a new form. Uh, if you have seven drafts on the floor, you, know, you have people who are very clear they want to push it. I think Kun Gon uh, doesn't need to answer you the, uh, you know, the future uh, uh, direction. They'll come back. 
they will come back. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, people who determined to push it. But on the other, on the other hand, there are a lot more people now on the street, you know, telling us that they don't want you to push it in the old way. They want you to push it in the right way. So it's up to the two parties to to handle this correctly. I think uh, that's one thing. Uh, I think I agree with. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I would say that uh, I will stop. I will stop. I will stop. You know, on this issue, I think I, I, it's not my position to to say more. You know, all, all these cases are now in court. I think we are waiting eagerly to see uh, what what are these cases will be proceeding. My the, the second question is much more uh, to the future. Kun uh, Pavit and uh, a reporter from the NHK um, and Ajahn Jarupan can and tell me too. You know, uh, I, I've heard that Pua Thai is ready uh, for the new election uh, weeks before the crisis took place. You know, uh, last month. I'm not so sure it's true or not. Uh, uh, before September, uh, rumors circulated in the media that Pua Thai is a is in the process of preparing for the early election. Uh, but of course, this miscalculation on the amnesty took them by surprise. And now they have to recalculate their, uh, uh, their strategy on who's going to run, uh, who's going to do the campaign. All of this may take time. They need to wait for the court decision, uh, all of this. But to me, parliamentary system is here to stay. If you look back about almost two decades, uh, you, will, you will find that we have 40 political parties emerging in Thai politics, 40 political parties. And in the last two general elections, there were only 10 parties on average making it to the parliament. And among the two, uh, among the 10 political parties, there are two big political parties. One is Pure Thai, uh, or in whatever name you would like to call them, one is a Democrat uh, party, the oldest. Uh, Democrat win uh, or the party popularity vote went from 7 million to now 12 million strong voters. Pure Thai went from 20 million strong now to 15 million strong voters, supporting, uh, leaving 3 million uh, voters voted for uh, no vote, 1 million voters, you know, for bad ballots. Uh, we have 45 million voters uh, in this country out of 65 million. Uh, 35 million came out voting, that's 75 percent, you know, of the voting. You cannot go higher. Uh, this put United States and many Western countries, you know, in a very shameful position when you compare to these statistics, you know. Uh, uh, 75 percent of the voters turn out the highest, you know, even higher than Democratic countries. Uh, what do you want to say about that, you see? Uh, it doesn't say much anyway. So, uh, but, but anyway, this system is, this structure is here to stay. What I'm trying to say, the structure is here to stay. And more importantly, the two parties are now beginning to embrace you know, new political platforms. You ask your students, young generation, what party they would like to vote for, Pure Thai or Democrat. They have two choices. Unless they live in Chonburi, they want to vote for that little small party. Unless they live in Banhanburi or Supanburi, sorry. Uh, you want to vote for that party. But if you are, are up and coming in politics, like in Cambodia, your young generation, what party you want to vote for? So these two parties now, they know, you don't need to tell them, yeah, they're experts. They know that they need to reform their own party. I'm not so sure if Puerto I want to embrace more of the conservative values or not, but to me, their programs, their populist uh, uh, projects are somewhat embracing, you know, on more conservative, less of the change, less of the liberalization, less of the, you know, new ways. I'm not so sure I'm, I'm correct or not. Ajahn Jarupan can tell me, you know, but, but, but they have a lot more followers, people who scare up changes. 60% of the Thais who said, please help me, please buy me my rice. You know, I don't care about the international market. I don't care about IMF. I don't even care, sorry, Michael, about your financial terms, you know, but please help me, you know, I, I, I vote for you, please, boss, you know, uh, but that's the old way, they're trying to move away from that too, and you know, to be on the center, uh, right, maybe, I don't know. Uh, Democrat has a big problem, sorry, Kun Kon, you know, uh, you are 40, 50 percent, you know, on the more liberal, uh, uh, on tax reform, on income reform, on land reform. But if you move further, some of your people may argue that you may lose more election. This is why Kun Chuan said, they need to decide, we need to decide, meaning they, whether or not they want to win election or hold on to the 
you know, party's values, which is, of course, uh, to me, is more and more moving uh, to a more open, more competitive, and more liberal. This is why people don't like them, because they are not our patron. Democrats are not our patron. We don't like them. They don't like us, but we vote for their values. And, you know, we don't follow them. You see, this is what urban people were saying. If I'm correct, then, Pavit, we are fine. You know, we are fine. Unless you are caught between personalities, politics. You know, unless uh, you listen to Kuntaksin too much, unless you hear Kuntaksin uh, too much, then we are in big trouble. But if we are not, then we need to nurture and push this political platform even further. You know, from now on, and I think uh, a, a, a reporter from the NHK is correct, uh, you know, uh, uh, by raising doubts, you know. Uh, but nothing wrong with the Thai winning election more. Why not? You know, if they are participating, you know, in a more transparent uh, elections, if you have watchdogs, if you participate in, you know, making sure that, especially from NHK, you know, to making sure that there's less vote buying, why not? They can win many more elections. I mean, because after all, you have only two choices from now on, Pure Thai and Democrat. But let's hope that in the next few weeks, these two parties will not be distinct from politics. Let's hope that the colonel will not come back. <laughs> you see? And if we can carry on like this, we are fine. We are fine. And I think for the first time in 12 years, I think we are moving away, like it or not, from Kun Thaksin. I'm not so sure we are moving away from Kun Kon, Kun Abhisit yet. They, they, they look very fresh still with us. They are not overseas, you know, but uh, we are moving away from all platform now. Uh, for the first time, people on the streets, listen, uh, please, uh, I listen to the red shirt channels, I listen to the uh, blue shirt channels, I listen to the yellow shirts every day. Part of my uh, job, you know, I urge my colleagues to listen to all these uh, voices, uh, uh, you know, all the time, but sadly, they tend to listen to one or another, or sadly, they just come to a Jantiti Nans analysis and ask him to tell them, uh, uh, you know, what are they, you know, but you need to listen to these voices by yourself. This is a very important, you know, uh, for you to uh, to do, you know, so that's my, my thinking. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Otsar Panitan. Now, we are uh, a bit over time uh, for... Uh, Last remarks from Kun Gon, uh, is the Democrat Party prepared for new elections? And how do you see Thailand's most workable path in the longer term on the horizon? Um, yeah, I, first of all, uh, the, just a quick comment on what uh, Dr. Panitan just, just mentioned. Um, I, I really also sense um, during the past several weeks that uh, Thailand is um, moving away from being overly uh, surprising as it may sound me saying this right now but uh, from being overly focused on issues related to this guy Thaksin um, every year that passes there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a new generation of, of youngsters who basically don't even remember Dr. Thaksin as Prime Minister um, and it's during this protest that I sense this particularly, um, that more and more people um, don't quite understand what the obsession with Dr. Thaksin is all about. They don't remember. And, um, and I think, yeah, exactly, they were 12 years old at the time. Um, so I, I think time, therefore, is, is, uh, is going to help us from that perspective, and I'm I'm very patient from the, from uh, from this perspective, um, and therefore I am not concerned whether the Democrat Party uh, should win the next election or not. I really am not. I think what would help a lot is, given that Pu Thai, in in your view, is going to win forever, um, you know, future elections. Then what would be great is that if Pu Thai could change a little bit so that their winning isn't seen to be so problematic for the country in the eyes of so many people you know not not the majority of the people obviously but still a lot of people um, millions of people who, who see a poor Thai victory as as something that's threatening um, <clears throat> to uh, the way of life or the, the right order of things and and so on and so forth so if poor Thai themselves could be more 
inclusive and 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 uh, and less, you know, in, in the way that they have been uh, recently, then then winning elections wouldn't be seen as a problem for anybody except for those who are trying to win under the umbrella of the Democrat Party. Nobody else would care. And 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 I think if both parties can therefore learn lessons um, and adjust their ways uh, so that winning and losing isn't seen to be such a major issue for the country, um, then as Dr. Panitan says, it's really not a problem. And by the way, I'm not sure uh, that um, the protesters are specifically wanting uh, a house dissolution. They've never said that, by the way. Um, and that's a problem. I don't know what it is they want. But the only possible uh, and, and acceptable um, next step, if Guetai were to decide that uh, they need to reaffirm their legitimacy, is a dissolution and, and an election. And although it may seem to us today uh, that a dissolution would just bring back Guetai again, so what's changed? Well, I think if you do enough of these, elections and and uh, and each time you have a reaffirmation of mandates uh, that in itself is of value um, so I, I wouldn't discount it entirely thank you thank you and um, last word from uh, the uh, MP Dr. Jaropan thank you uh, so thank you for for letting me uh, hear your voice deeply uh, about um, your worry and also the concerns uh, as a representative. I representative Kun Gon as well. So uh, for Pure Thai Party, we will we will hear what is the worry of our, of, of our people, and uh, for the decisions today will be uh, also to be considered for the next step and. As uh, Dr. Panditan said, um, we really um, concerning about the judicial procedures, and uh, everyone would like to bring the case to the court. But um, our, some people said that uh, even though they would like to help bail, they they don't have it. So it's very difficult for. Uh, who will be responsible for, for uh, I mean, the standard or to be responsible for the judicial procedures. And when the uh, judicial uh, power couldn't solve the uh, basic rights for the people, then the issue will bring to the parliament, which is um, the place where uh, the sovereignty will be considered and as a representative we we cannot um, uh, comment on the decisions of the judicial uh, power but rather solve the regulation laws and so on to uh, let the judge to to have the laws to be considered and protect the rule of law and what we worry most to be as the representative and legislators in the parliament is about the rule of law. So the rule of law, we, we really fo follow the constitutions carefully, word by word, every single word uh, through the constitutions. And as I explained earlier, the equality is, the, is come to prioritize in the constitutions. That's why the difficulties comes to to hear in this room the faculties of uh, political science and asking the questions why we have just only two parties, why we have just only two choices, and why we have to uh, select just only these two choices. And this is the issues where I would like to to hear from you. Actually, I think this uh, situation in Thailand is not 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 new, but it's repeating the history. And we we are able to solve the past right now. And as friends um, among various um, uh, carriers, bring a point into this room, political science, and we would like to have the resolutions 
on in this room and uh, and and expand further how could we have social contract how could we have the rule of law how could we have the democracy which we really prioritize the human values human dignities human rights and people's values and we would like to hear uh, people voice and we would like to uh, have their inspirations to prioritize in the systems because they are so valuable for the system for democracies so so that's why I'm I'm, I'm here and have Ajahn and, and, and friends to to hear from you how the rule of laws begins and how can we cut the cycles of repeating uh, sadness and um, also the cycles that we be repeating uh, the language that we don't understand each other. Sometimes um, you you said uh, you un don't understand why Thaksin, why Apisit is uh, always speak some things, uh, I mean, on the top, but um, in uh, other hands, we have to uh, understand what they really mean. So I think um, political science, a faculty of political science could help, and um, we can um, break through the cycles and have um, positive resolutions. Let's hear the uh, decisions of the court, uh, constitutional court, uh, together, and then we we can see what uh, the constitutions and rule of law means. Thank you, thank you. I'm afraid uh, we remain divided, uh, uh, and uh, we'll be divided for some time to come. Uh, if in 2010, for example, one side would emphasize uh, May 19th, the other side would uh, emphasize uh, April 10th, uh, what happened uh, when security officers were shot at in May 19th, when uh, civilians were shot at. Uh, you know, we haven't found the right mix of uh, truth and justice uh, to achieve reconciliation, and somehow uh, going forward, uh, Thai society will have to find the, the right right balance. Uh, full justice may not allow uh, reconciliation, but insufficient justice also will not allow uh, reconciliation. Uh, next two sessions that we have here will not be about Thai politics. We are moving from political development to uh, economic development. On December 3rd, we have uh, something in the middle income trap. Middle income trap, and on December 20th, on the FTAs. Uh, trade policy. Please, uh, I'm, I apologize for being over time, uh, running over the schedule a little bit. Uh, please join me in thanking all the speakers for their time and uh, their efforts. Thank you. And thank you for coming.